You visited some of the great painted caves. Oh, in yes. Europe. Tell me what you remember when first you looked upon those underground caves. Well, you didn't want to leave. Here you come into an enormous uh, chamber, uh, like a great cathedral with these animals painted. And they're painted with a life like the life of a ink on silk in the Japanese painting. And um, when you realize the darkness is inconceivable, we're there with electric lights. But in a couple of instances, the concierge, the man who was showing us through, turned off the lights and you were never in darker darkness in your life. It was like a... I don't know, just a complete knockout of, you don't know where you are, whether you're looking north, south, east, or west. All orientation is gone, and you're in a darkness that never saw the sun. Then they turn the lights on again, and you see these gloriously painted animals. A bull that will be 20 feet long, and painted so that the haunches uh, will be represented by a swelling in the rock. You know, they take it count of the whole thing. It's, it's incredible. Do you ever look at these primitive art objects and think not of the art but of the man or woman standing there painting or creating? I find that's where I speculate. Uh, this is what hits you when you go into those caves, I can tell you that. What was in their mind when they were doing that? And that's not an easy thing to do. And how did they get up there? And how did they see anything? And what kind of light did they have? Uh, little flashing torches, throwing flickering things, and then to get something of that grace and perfection. And with respect to the problem of beauty, is this beauty intended? Or is it something that is the natural expression of a beautiful spirit? You know what I mean? Mm. When you hear a bird sing, the beauty of the bird's song 